could you show us how to change a student's ID? Sure, you can do that in MMS Generations as long as you have access to that option in the admin menu. Let's take a look. In the admin menu, you'll see there's an option to change student ID numbers. What if the menu option isn't available? It's grayed out. Well, an MMS administrator can enable menu access to that option if it's not available, or you can ask that person, your MMS administrator, to make the change. And then also, something to note for Massachusetts schools is that you need to sign into MMS as ID manager to change a student ID. That's good information to know about the ID manager. Where can I find more information on that? Well, you can take a look at the documentation for MMS for the state of Massachusetts on our website. Good to know. So when we want to change a student ID, does it matter if the school's database is opened or closed? It does. You would leave the database closed and also you want to be sure that no one is logged into MMS. So most likely you want to make any changes to student IDs before or after school hours. And when you choose the Change Student ID Numbers option, MMS will allow you to choose the database. I see that there's two options available for changing student ID numbers. That's right. You can choose to modify ID numbers for one table one school year or for all tables, all school years. Can we see both? Absolutely. We'll start with all tables, all school years. This option is used more often than the one school year option. Why would a school choose this option? Well, this is used to completely change a student's ID number across schools and school years. And we'll talk about why you would do this in just a few moments and why it's important to have a unique student ID. So why is the school year and the select table options grayed out? Well, they aren't available because we're changing all school years. So you just choose the school where the student is currently enrolled so that you can review the list of students and find the student whose ID needs to be changed. Is it easy to locate that student? It is. And also, it's helpful to be able to sort the grid. You can sort by clicking on the heading like ID number, student name, or year of graduation, and also you can sort in ascending or descending order by clicking on the heading. So then once you find the student whose ID needs to be changed, then you click on the ID number field, in this case for Jacqueline Aviatici, with the ID of 1422018. Why is the student listed three times? Well, typically, you'll see a student listed more than once if the student exists in more than one school and school year. So we've selected that student and student ID, and then we can type in the new ID number for the student, and then click the Process ID Number button. And if the ID is already in use, MMS will post an alert message letting you know that, but it will allow you to continue. So again, why are we seeing this alert message? Well, this particular alert message is just confirming the changes that we've made to the ID. So you can either click yes to proceed or no to cancel. And when you click yes, MMS will process the changes. Is there a way to verify that MMS did change the student ID numbers? Yes, you just locate the same student and the ID number field should be updated to the new number, 1429999 in this instance for Jacqueline. So how does the other option work, you know, for one table, one school year? That option can be used when there is a duplicate ID or incorrect student ID in a specific school year or school. So in this instance, you start by choosing that specific school year and the school. You select the student master table, which holds the student biographical records, and then MMS will display a list of the ID numbers based on the school and school year that you selected. Can I still sort the columns like I did before? Yes, you can. Do you just choose the ID number that needs to be changed like we did previously? That's right. So we're just choosing Frederick Hartford in this instance. We enter the new ID number for Frederick. So we click on the process ID number. MMS confirms that the ID number isn't already in use for the current school year. What if the ID isn't in use for the current school year, but it's used in a previous year? 
Well, again, you'll get an alert message from MMS, but you will be able to continue. Now, what's this list showing us? Well, after we process the ID number, MMS gathers the records for that ID number in the school year we chose and shows us a list of matches. What if there's more than one student listed for the same ID? Well, then you know you definitely have a duplicate that needs to be changed. So you just click on the checkbox for the record that needs to have the ID number changed, and you click it again if you need to deselect it. And then you just click OK when you're done. Again, is there a way that we can verify that the student ID number was changed? Yes, we just locate the same student, Frederick, in the list, and the ID number should be changed. I have a question for you. Why is it important for a students to have a unique ID number within the MMS system? Well, the student ID is tied to all of the student's information in MMS, from the biographical module to attendance records to a student's schedule and grades and more within the current school year and any prior ones in MMS. Does it matter when the student ID number is changed within the school year? Well, we recommend that ID number changes are made at the beginning of a school year, if possible, before a student has a schedule, attendance records, and grades. However, a school can update a student ID with this operation we talked about if there is an error or change. Why is it necessary to change the ID number in the prior school years? Well, the student's permanent transcript, grade point average, career credits, and graduation requirements are attached to the student ID. Excellent. Thank you very much for the information, Karen. You're welcome.